Hello everyone, this is Empro with part 3 of my Jurassic World Evolution 2 DLC series. And this is the final part because this DLC was so big it needed an entire video to itself. This is DLC number 8, Worldwide Wonders. I have marked this at 20 to 30 pounds because it is that big. The story is that you have granted access to build more Jurassic World resorts on more countries around the world in challenge and sandbox mode. Once you have enough cash, you can buy or lease new locations to build more parks with new biomes, natural disasters, and more importantly, more dinosaurs. So there is a bit of everything in this. It's a challenge mode themed um, a DLC where you start with three locations and then once you make enough money from those locations, you can either buy or lease new ones. And there is the... There is the um, the function of the poor country system which um, basically means like it's mostly in African countries where the government is so poor once your Jurassic World start making a lot of money the governments will take a, a bit of money from the park as a tax basically and other other more challenges like that with new rewards and stuff it is the biggest DLC I have thought of let's start with the new buyers we have Mediterranean Savannah wetland and woodland so Mediterranean is sort of a mix between, um, we all know what Mediterranean biome is like, it's sort of a mix between sort of desert and temperate. Savannah, wetland and woodland are all the same. Woodland is kind of like a deciduous uh, forest. Obviously with this comes new natural disasters. So first we have fog, heat wave, dust storm and flood. Now all of these um, affect the ones we have in the game already. Fog affects temperate, woodland, wetland, alpine and taiga. Heat wave affects savanna, desert, mediterranean and tropical. Dust storm affects savanna and desert. And flood affects wetland and tropical. Now these are pretty self-explanatory. And with these comes new injuries such as a sunburn and a blind. Fog can do is that it, um, it lowers your visibility of dinosaurs drastically and um, it kind of doesn't help your ranger teams that much either. So does the dust storm and the flood makes it difficult to navigate in your park, but it's good for the spinosaurs. So there are a dozen new maps for this. I have four maps for each new biome and each one we have in the game already. So let's start with temperate. We have France, China, Sweden, Portugal, so relatively temperate countries. In Tiger we have Russia, Norway, Finland and Switzerland. Yeah, so more on the snow side. Alpine is Bolivia, Mongolia, Austria and Nepal. Very mountainous, mountainous countries, yeah. Desert is Australia, Egypt, Morocco and South Africa. We already have Mexico, but I would have put it there. Tropical is Indonesia, Peru, Cuba and Congo. The Congo River Basin I think would look beautiful in this game. Mediterranean is Greece, Italy, Turkey and Malta. Malta appeared in Dominion and all of these are Mediterranean countries. In Savannah we have Kenya, Chad, India and Northern Australia. Chad because everybody loves a Chad. Wetland is China South, Netherlands, Denmark and Poland. China and Netherlands have very big wetlands. Denmark has a bog and uh, there are marshes in Poland. For woodlands we have Argentina, south of Germany, Belgium and Lithuania. I've um, spelt it wrong. But these are all like deciduous or like coniferous forests. And I have drawn each of them on the world. So here are dots for each of the maps and where they're located. And I will pass a quick little slideshow and uh, show all the maps I've drawn these countries and if we add all of the all of the uh, maps from the previous DLC locations it would add it up to this so I'm just going to quickly pass uh, around the maps that I've come up with for this DLC
Right, now let's get on to the dinosaurs. I've chosen two dinosaurs for each continent, minus Oceania. So first up we have Cetacosaurus and Dilong for Asia, Ostrophrichosaurus and Dicreosaurus for Africa, Neovenator and Hyalaeosaurus for Europe, Centrosaurus and Torvosaurus for North America, and Argentinosaurus and Abelisaurus for South America. There is also a new type of building that comes with um, this DLC that I've come up, it is the Economic Center. The Economic Center is an operations building with many new uses. These features might be a fossil market where you can buy specific fossils and sell your own fossils. It will also allow you to market and advertise your park for a fee, but it will boost your park visits and star rating temporarily. Also, this goes for all uh, previous DLCs I have mentioned. These are what I call preset amenities or preset attractions. These, they have a unique style and preset modules which you cannot modify. And they provide a bonus and more fun to your park but cost more than a normal amenity. And they have different sizes depending on what it is. Some of these are based off stuff seen in video game or in the movie lore. So up first we have a Triassic Arcade, Cretaceous Cafe, Sabertooth Diner, Pterosauria Cinema, Jungle Bean Coffee Shop, an ice cream stand, a hologram museum, a natural science center, a Jurassic nightclub, and extinct clothing. Now I've assigned each of them a DLC that I think they should come with, such as Hammer's Expansion, Hammer's Dream, Masrani's Ambition, Lockwood's Wish, Finch's Zoo, and Paleo Nature. And these are kind of like the guest, uh, the guest buildings from the first game, you know, you had your fast food and you couldn't really modify it, but these ones would provide a more bonus. And those are my all of my ideas and concepts of DLCs that I have come up with in this game. Now I will mention this again that my ideas and concepts are not perfect, nor am I pressuring Frontier to add these into the game. These are what I would add as DLCs and my ideas. Now I hope you loved this three part series, it was really fun to make but really long to make. And I will see you guys later. This has been Empro.